Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming, and on today's video we're going to do a fun project that was inspired by this. Oops. Um, we're going to be decoupaging some vintage dictionary pages onto one of these little, what is it called, tin plaques from Walmart. Then we're gonna, I'm going to teach you guys how to make this kind of, of a uh, flower. And I call these clothesline rope flowers. They're going to be built on magnets, so they'll go on our tin. And then we're going to put a faith verse on it. So it should be really good. Um, move things around as you're hopping on. Say hello. Let me know what you're up to. Feel free to sprinkle all that good stuff. Okay, so this is clothesline rope. This came from Walmart. It's not in the craft section. It's in the section where you do, where you get your laundry baskets and laundry supplies. And then we'll probably use some buttons. Uh, I'm gonna just use this kind of plain Mod Podge. These are the button magnets we'll be using, so yeah. Okay, I don't know if you saw this video that I made. It was, gosh, maybe two years ago. And this, um, I don't think the stencil is available anymore, but this is a vintage ceiling tile, a tin, from my favorite uh, antique mall called Queen of Hearts. And I just used white chalk paste and this stencil that uh, said, God is able to do far more than we could ever ask or imagine, Ephesians 3.20. And I had a lot of people asking me about this and I thought, we haven't done decoupage. This isn't decoupage, but I thought we haven't done decoupage in a while, so let's do some. So let's start at the very beginning. As you guys are hopping on, tell me hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to sprinkle. Okay, this project is going to start with some dictionary pages. This is the new Britannica Webster Dictionary and Reference Guide that I got about a year ago at Goodwill. And the pages are white, okay? This one right here is the New Century Dictionary that was my grandmother Mamu's. And um, when she passed away, I inherited most of her books. And this just, I have three, three, um, three volumes, I believe. And it just sat in a cabinet. And then when I started crafting with paper, I thought, oh, I want to pull that out and um, look at it and see if I like it. And I started crafting with it. And um, I think my grandmother, she would be tickled that I was actually using it for something. So let me show you how I get the pages out. I'm just going to use one of these exacto knives. Mine are pretty dull. They definitely need to be sharpened, or I just need to get some new ones. Let's go a few pages further, because that spot is not good. I have um, taken out so many pages. And um, so you can find these kind of books, these old books at thrift stores, at garage sales. You might have something like this just hanging out in the basement. Um, so I took three pages out. And the thing with decoupaging is I don't like all this negative, just with nothing going on space. So I'm going to show you how I do it. Typically, I will cut the margins off. And I don't want square, jaggedy edges, so I'm just doing this sort of wave. I'm going to do the top. The first couple times I did this kind of decoupage, I was thinking it would be best to have really teeny tiny little pieces of paper. And I tell you what, it took forever. And I guess I just realized that they don't have to be super teeny. So I'll show you what I do now. And 
And we're going to go all the way through. We're going to do the decoupage first, then we'll build the flowers, then we'll put the whole thing together. Okay, so on this one, this is what this looks like, and I'm just going to do, there's a line that goes down the center, so I'm going to kind of do a squiggle over it. Alright, and now I have two piles of this. I pulled out some other ones. I think this might be enough. Well, let's go ahead and cut up some more. This is some I got started. I'm going to cut most of them kind of a medium size, and then I'm going to cut one section of them. Look at the beautiful graphics. I won't be using those. Oh, okay. I definitely won't be using this piece right here because I hate. I don't know if that's a snake or an eel. It's a snake. I hate snakes. Okay, let's get rid of that page. It's another fact. Ooh. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut these. Okay, so this is what most of them about the size are. And then here's some littler ones. Alrighty. Okay, like I said at the start of the video, um, this is from Walmart. It's um, in their craft section. It's with their, um, with the surfaces, with wood and those kind of things. And it's just a galvanized tin plaque. So you can use magnets with it. And I like everything about it. All right? And like I said at the start, I'm just using the Mod Podge that I happen to have on hand, which is this matte uh, Mod Podge. If you don't have Mod Podge, I don't know if you know that you can make it. Um, and it's basically the recipe is just white school glue and water, but um, you can do a Google search and pull up that recipe and make it. You can also find, oops, you can also find this stuff um, at Dollar Tree, at pretty much any craft store. I really spilled it all over. You want to try not to get too much of it on your hands because then your hands will stick to your project. So I'm going to start in this bottom corner um, and let's just pull some pieces over here so we're ready to go. So I'm going to put a good thick coat on and I'm not going all the way to the edge. I am going to uh, leave just a little margin. So you're going to put a piece on, then put a little bit of Mod Podge over the top of it and then layer another piece. And you want them to be going you know, all different directions. And I think you're going to be surprised how quickly this is going to come together. You do want to make sure that there is Mod Podge underneath each piece of your paper. For this project, you guys, if you don't have um, dictionary pages, you can use scrapbook paper. You could probably use wrapping paper. You could probably use brown craft paper. There's a lot of different things that you should be able to use. I love doing decoupage. How about you guys? And I have done, um, you know, in the about four years, whoops, that I have had this paint.
page, DIY Dreaming, it'll be four years in uh, April, I think. Um, I have done my fair share of decoupage. And I've also used my grandmother's book to decoupage a lot. Uh, There is one trick that I definitely want to show you um, for uh, the edges of this. So let's just do one more row. And then of course, because I don't want you guys to be bored, I worked ahead this morning um, so that you wouldn't have to sit and watch me decoupage. Although this really only takes probably 15 or 20 minutes to do. So I'm putting my piece down and then I'm putting something over the top of it. I don't want these big graphics, so I would flip that over. And um, my pieces are just going, you know, winky, 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 wonky, nothing, no um, scheduled or planned, you know, order. Okay, let's pretend for right now that we are, have done the whole entire thing and I want to tell you a couple things. See around the edge. Um, I'm going to turn my ring light off for just a minute. And maybe that'll help you see because I do want to tell you one thing that doesn't look good if you don't take care of it. Okay, you can see how I have gotten Mod Podge outside of where the paper is. If you don't cover that whole entire thing with Mod Podge, it's going to look messy. So when you're done putting your paper on and getting it all stuck down, you want to take a minute to just go over that whole edge and get the whole edge covered. All right? And the other thing you want to do is you want to look, and sometimes Mod Podge can dry kind of uh, cloudy if you have too thick of puddles. So as you're going along, look to see, do I have any big puddles of Mod Podge that I need to, um, you know, pull off with a brush? Okay, easy, easy. So I have a whole pile of papers that I will stick in my book for the next time I am doing a decoupage project. And there's already some papers in here. And these are the leftovers from the other one that I did. So let's just pop them in this book and let me move them out of our way. And I'm going to set this aside and I will finish it off camera. And this is the one that I did this morning. I used the wider pages. And looking at it now, I can see there's a few teeny tiny little spots that I missed, which is fine. Let me get this Mod Podge off so that we're not fighting with it. Um, when we start making our flowers. It's very sticky. Uh, 
Okay, so the other thing I want to tell you is um, when it was fully dry, which took about an hour and a half, maybe two hours, I took this outside and I gave it one coat of clear matte sealer spray. All right, and um, it's a little bumpy, so what that means is, is when we do the stencil, when we get to that part, it's not gonna be completely perfect because the surface isn't completely flat. But this will help it have a better, um, help it not absorb the chalk paste and have it be fuzzy. So I definitely recommend that you spray your project with a clear matte sealer spray before you proceed to the next step. Okay, let's do some flowers. All right, this is the main ingredient of clothesline rope flower, flowers. And this is clothesline rope from Walmart. It's in the laundry section, not crafting. And what I have found is that the hardest thing is that this just wants to pop, the inside wants to poke out. So I'm gonna pull it back a little bit and cut it off. And then I'm gonna pull my tail back and I'm gonna squeeze a teeny bit of glue into here and pinch it closed. And now I won't have that issue with that poking out. Um, all right, and I'm gonna build these flowers today on a piece of lace. And um, that's what this one is built on. So I'm just gonna roughly cut a circle. You do want something that's kind of stiff. You could build this on but it has to be lightweight because the magnets have to be able to hold it. Um, you could build it on a piece of canvas duck that's pretty thick. Um, this lace here is lightweight, but it's pretty firm. So I'm going to just cut a circle. And I can always trim it smaller if it's just way too big. you but I am just I think I'm biologically unable to ever cut a circle none of my circles ever look like circles okay so what we're gonna do with our clothesline rope is we're just gonna just start in the center and do a coil and I'm using my Shervander cool shot low temperature hot gluing device. So I'm just going to put some glue here in the center and stick that little tail in the center. This flower is super easy and you can take this idea. You could do it with macrame cording. You could even do it with some of this um, Dollar Tree rope, although it would be much bigger. Um, you could do it with yarn. You could do this idea with a lot of different things. It doesn't necessarily have to be this clothesline rope, but I like the look of it, and it's cream, which is my color. <laughs> okay, so let's start going around, coiling it around itself. Don't worry if your, your most inside coil is not a circle, but it's kind of an oval, because we're going to put a button on there. I'm going to just do maybe one more coil around it. Can you guys see that? And then I'll show you how you do this which is not brain surgery, it's just fun.
Um, okay, people ask me all the time, where do I get my ideas? Um, where do I get my ideas? Well, you know what? I get them everywhere. Really, I seriously do. Like, I was looking at this yesterday. I'm going to hang it back up because I always have this hanging up here in my craft room. Um, and it inspired me to do this. I knew I had these um, tin wall plaques in my little closet, and I was like, let's do something with it. So, um, as far as I know, this clothesline rope flower is original to me, because I didn't see someone else do this, but uh, the reason why I show these projects here is to inspire you so you can, you know, take this idea and run with it in your style and your colors, you know, to go in your decor or in case you want it as a gift. So feel free, if you like this idea, to make some of these yourself. All right, so I just did one little flower petal, and now I'm just going to kind of do another. Can you guys see where we're going with it? Isn't it cute? Oh my gosh. I totally love these. Well, hey, Jane. Um, if you all, if any of you guys started late, didn't see from the very beginning of this video, um, when I'm not live anymore, you can come back and watch on replay if you want to hear, you know, all the info about the project. And I'm absolutely not worrying if these are all spaced exactly the same or the same shape flower petals. That does not matter. I mean, these are not all exactly the same either. Cynthia says she loves it. Emma said she did clothesline flowers last year while she was learning about burlap flowers. Yeah, I, ha I have about a hundred different flowers that I like to do. And I have not taught this one in quite a while. So that was also one of the things that motivated me to do this today. Also, I don't want you guys to get bored. So I want to always be switching things up. You know, doing different kinds of flowers all the time. Okay, this is going to be our last one. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut about to where I think it will need to go. And then I'm going to try to pull out this thing, this pesky inside stuff. Pull out as much of that as I can and cut it off. And then I'm going to put some glue inside my little clothesline rope and pinch it together and then we'll glue it down in just a second. So who, well here's a question, I think I asked this last time I showed this, who um, used a clothesline to dry their clothes after they had washed them. Any of you guys? Or who remembers their mom or their grandma doing that? I remember, I'm sure my mom did it too, but I really remember my grandma Belle. They lived on a farm in Idaho and um, she had one of those clothesline things that look like almost like an umbrella and that will turn. <laughs> and I can remember myself and my cousins would um, run and jump and hang on to it and spin around 
like it was, you know, a sideways Ferris wheel almost, um, to the point that we almost broke her clothesline thing and she got mad and told us to leave it alone. Uh, so those are the kind of funny memories that I have. All right, let's glue down this last little bit. Isn't that cute? Okay, this is essentially the same thing. What did I build it on? I'm trying to remember. Oh, I built it on a white circle, a white piece of felt. And all I did was loop de doop de doop uh, the um, coil, and then I just, on the back of it, I don't think I have enough left to show you this. Um, well, no, I don't think I have enough. Anyway, so I did the loops on the back, and then I put my magnet on the top. So these are the two styles, and let's finish this one off with a magnet. Um, let me see, does it need to be trimmed anywhere? It is kind of big. It's definitely not a circle. Okay, good enough. All right, now we need to decide what kind of a button do we want. And honestly, I kind of feel like the smaller the better. But I want something that has some interest. So, I'm going to look through my little box of buttons, which I am in desperate need. That's a pretty one. Maybe we'll use that one. I am in desperate need of some more because I, ha I have tons of the teeny, teeny ones left, but my medium and large supply is skinny. And honestly, um... You can get it. You can get buttons everywhere, but I want. I always want to use the ones that are vintage and that are real, uh, either abalone or mother of pearl. And um, let me tell you one trick. I am going to do a video probably this week, talking about buttons and how you can tell the difference between a, a real pearl button is what they're called, and plastic. And one thing about them is that you, they feel cold. They don't um, absorb heat the way plastic does, so they feel cool to your touch. And I had a follower today who mentioned this. She said, put um, your bag of buttons, if you're trying to determine what's what, put it in a Ziploc bag and stick it in the freezer for a little bit. And when you pull it out, you will be able to, and put the buttons in your hands, you will easily be able to tell which ones are mother of pearl or pearl or abalone versus the ones that are plastic. The other thing is if you look at the back of them, you can generally see evidence that they were cut out of a shell. I think I'm going to use this one. All right, let's just pop that on there, and then we'll do the magnet, and then we'll finish our project. This lace that I used as my backing is really stiff. And it came from Hobby Lobby a few years ago, but you can probably still get it in the wedding ribbon section. And I got it when they had a 40% off ribbon thing, which is how I always uh, look to buy ribbon when it's on sale. Okay, we're going to be using some of these button magnets. Sharon says she loves collecting buttons. Me too, I have like five boxes. 
and then a ton of jars. But I would say the majority of my buttons are plastic and different colors. And what I love the most are the white mother of pearl and abalone buttons that are made with real shells. And then I love the smoky ones, which are the kind of grayish ones. So, um, yeah, I have a ton of buttons, but they are not all uh, my favorite. Okay, so I'm going to try using just one magnet first. This is a pretty big, I'm just looking to see which side of my magnet is stronger. Um, this is pretty big. We might need more than one. Let's try one. They, you can get a smaller size button magnet, but for this large of an item, I think... Aha! I think... And now that I'm looking at it, you know what? I think this would be prettier on this one even though it's still wet and it looks dark, because the paper is cream and this paper is white. But for right now, we're going to do it on this. So there's always something to think about. And I think that that strength is going to be just fine. Okay, let me give you my quick lawyer's disclaimer about button magnets. These are awesome, but they're terrible for little ones to put in their mouth and they're terrible for animals to put in their mouth. And um, you, you will end up in, your little one or your little, or your animal will end up in the hospital having surgery if they put one of these in their mouth. So just always make sure that you keep them up, that you don't drop one and leave it on the floor. And I always put mine back in my Ziploc bag with all my button magnets, and I stick it back in the box where I keep it just, we have two dogs, and I would be heartbroken. I don't know that they would try to want to eat a button magnet, but I know little ones might think it's a piece of candy, so just be cautious about that. Okay, let's look at the decoration. And um, so we're going to stencil right here, and in case you missed the whole video, which you can come back and watch it on replay, um, I sprayed this with one coat of clear matte sealer spray after it was fully dry um, to help get a crisp impression. And um, here's the thing about MagnoliaDIY.com. This is why I got involved with this company. They have a huge selection of faith and Bible verse stencils. And if you would like the whole list, the full list of them, just tell me in the comments and I'll, I'll get you the full list. But these are a few that I pulled out. And what I was thinking when I pulled these out is I wanted the stencils that had mostly just writing on them because this is kind of busy to go with something that also like maybe had a lamp on it or a bunch of flowers. Okay, so this one is Matt, Philippians 1.6. Be confident in this that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. This is the one I'm seriously thinking about doing because I love this one. This one says, I still remember the days I prayed for the things I have now. And, oh, look at this. It's very dusty. This was a um, tarnished silver platter from Goodwill that I painted. And then I made these flowers. So just two round coils and then one almost just like what I just showed you. And I used gray chalk paste to do this stencil on it. It's been ever since I made it. It's probably been at least two, two and a half years ago. It's been sitting here on my little craft desk. That is one of my, my favorites. If, if I can, you know, whenever I'm getting frustrated about something or things aren't happening as quick as I want them to, to happen, I just need to think back. And remember the days that I was praying for the things that I have now. So this is a beautiful one too. The other one I was kind of thinking about doing 
is this one, Psalm 23, verse 5. My cup runneth over. This might be the winner. Or here's another beautiful one. And, and these are more just words and not a lot of decoration. Magnolia also has a whole bunch of beautiful um, faith and Bible verse stencils that have designs on them too. But I didn't want it to look too busy with this uh, um, clothesline rope flower. Okay, this one says, I am a child of God. Oh, I love this one. Romans 5, 8. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is a pretty one. It does have a little bit of decoration in it, some leaves. It says, let your faith be bigger than your fear. This one I love, but I, I knew it wouldn't work because of the flower. But anyways, I wanted to show it to you. Look at this adorable church. Then sings my soul. And here's another beautiful one that has some decoration on it. So I... I most likely wouldn't use this with something that I intended to use one of these flowers. But this one says, Psalm 150, verse 6, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And this is one of, these are just a couple of, I don't know, 40 or maybe, I don't know. But they have so many awesome faith ones. I think this is the winner. Where's my tacky towel? I need, you, when you're gonna work on decoupage paper, you definitely want to fuzz your stencil because you don't want, these stencils are sticky, even when they're used a few times, and I don't want it to pull up any of the paper. So I'm gonna take it off the backing, and I'm just gonna put it on my little tacky towel once or twice. I could fuzz it on a pair of jeans. I could fuzz it on this apron, on a little, little tea towel. Um, and I want to put this kind of low. So, and I think I'm gonna do another style of flower for this particular one because this paper is too white for this creamy lace. Um, but, Really, I just wanted to teach you how to do this style of flower and um, show you the decoupage process. So we're going to pretend that it all goes together just perfect. All right. So I put my stencil down a little bit lower to give room for the um, flower. And then I'm going to just really make sure that this is pushed down the best I possibly can because it is bumpy. And when your surface has a few ridges and stuff, it has layers of paper going winky wonky, um, then you don't usually get the best crispest stencil impression. So I just want to minimize that as much as possible by making sure it's pushed down good. All right, and I'm just gonna take my small cut apart squeegee and some black chalk paste. And I'm going to apply my chalk paste around the circle first. I'm going to be really careful with this project to get it on and then pull up the clumps and then not keep going over and over. Okay, let's get the big lumps up. I'm using the other side of the squeegee that's flat. Okay, now let's do the center. And I'm just using black, but of course, you could use whatever you want, whatever color appeals to you. I'm putting it all back in my pot because why would I throw it away? <sighs> you know, I'll use it on those little 
globs on the next project. Okay, and let's, let me get my hands clean. Let's look to see that we have everything covered, and I think I do. <laughs> and now's the moment of truth, the peel and reveal. Looks pretty good. Wow. You know, it's the spray, I swear, that really helps so much. The top part of this is fabulous. The bottom part is fabulous too. Okay, I'm gonna throw this in my tub of water over here. And I will take that stencil out to the kitchen sink the second I'm finished with this video. And I'll first thing I always do is wash my stencil and lay it out to dry. You don't wanna leave them soaking in the water for any longer than you need to. Look at that. And, um, ooh, 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 okay, imagining that I had a flower that matched, which I'll make something different. Look how awesome that is. What do you guys think? Any, any flower that you make, I'm just looking around to see if I have any little flowers here in my craft room. I really don't. Any little flower that you make, you can put on a magnet and put on something like this. So that's what I wanted to show you guys today. The whole decoupage process is really easy. Um, I used vintage dictionaries, but you can use any kind of paper you want. You can use craft paper, scrapbook paper. Um, I know that you can buy scrapbook paper that looks like book pages. It could be Reader's Digest pages. It could be any kind of um, printed page that you want, just cut with kind of swirly motions. Um, I just used the Mod Podge that I had on hand, which is matte, but you can use glossy, um, they have some of this that is antique. You could use that too. That would be pretty. Um, and I let that dry. Oh, and I did go over the edges. So they don't look messy. Can you see what I'm talking about? It's not like it's shiny in one area and then looks, you know, cloudy in another. So do, if you're going to use this piece, which came from Walmart, it was around... I think it was like $4.88 or something. Um, if you're gonna use one of these, then do make sure that you use a paintbrush and you go all the way around the edges with your Mod Podge when you're done with your paper and make sure that you also look to see that you don't have any big puddles of Mod Podge on top of your paper that will dry looking cloudy. And um, I showed you how to build this. This right here, is clothesline rope from Walmart. It's cream. It's my color. I love green. Um, this is clothesline rope. This is clothesline rope. They all have magnets on them. And it comes from Walmart in the laundry section. It's not with hardware and, and other kinds of rope. It's where you would find laundry tubs and um, that kind of thing. And we just did a tight coil. I showed you how to pull that, those inside stringy things out and glue it shut. We did a coil, then we did these little loopy petals, then we glued on a flower and a button. And that's just all there is to it. So I hope you liked this. Um, I will get pictures of everything close up. I'm gonna finish that other one so I can put this flower on it because I think it will look great. I'll put those pictures here in these comments. I will also put them just on my page. Um, if you want the full list of all the faith and Bible verse stencils that Magnolia has, just say full list or link or something and I, I will get that for you. We did use chalk paste 
and gosh, this project was so simple. Um, and so if you just want to look and see what Bible verses they have or what faith themes they have, just let me know. I'd be glad to get that for you. Do it this or this or say something to me in the comments. Um, feel free to ask questions. Feel free to sprinkle. Deb, I'll get you the full list. Colleen, I'll get you the full list too. So I'm going to go get a cup of coffee and sit down in my comfy chair. I'm going to wash my stencil first. I'm going to show you what my little tub looks like. Oh my gosh. So I'm going to go wash this first. It's my first thing. Then I'll sit down and start getting you guys the information. So just let me know if you want the full list. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Alrighty. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope to see you tomorrow, uh, which if you're watching live today, Saturday, tomorrow, Sunday, and tomorrow will be Christ and Crafting. And I think we are going to make a book stack with, um, that'll be reversible, that um, will have some words on it that say, where is it? Uh, I don't know where I've put it right now. It says faith, hope, and love, and then there's a citation to 1 Corinthians. So we'll be talking about those things. And uh, anyways, I'd love to have you join me tomorrow for Christ and Crafting. Alrighty, have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you guys later.